All right, we're working on a 1951 Dodge Coronet four-door chassis. Um, why four-door? Because I got it cheap. I would love to have had a two-door, but four-door works good for my purpose with the family as well. i uh, hoping to use it as a family cruiser, although I've been working on it long enough. My kids probably be full-grown before I'm done with it. What I've done, I also had available, and the reason I use it is because I had it I know that's not always best practice, but uh, I'm trying to get do this on a uh, low scale, not put a lot of money into it. I've put a late 90s, it's either a 98 or 99 Dodge Dakota uh, chassis on the front. I hate to call it a front clip because it didn't unbolt. I had to uh, cut the original Dakota chassis and welded it in here to the original 51 frame those wells don't they aren't pretty but they're going to hold uh, put box and plates top and bottom those i think those are called button welds on the top i don't know my terminology i'm just putting it together as i can um, the the inspiration for this build really was thinking back about uh guys doing this in the 50s when you know i caught Think of it as the birth of hot rodding. They didn't have a lot of fancy tools. They had uh, acetylene torches and uh, you know some uh, some saws, some basic saws, basic tools. They didn't have the, everything that we can get today for the cheap prices that we can. So I wish I had more videos of when I actually uh, cut this frame in. Um, there's the original front off the '51 Coronet. Uh, I had considered rebuilding those, but uh, those keying pins. I understand uh, you're going to rebuild them often if you use them. Uh, I have, still have this front section here because I need to use these horns here. Cut those off. Possibly a piece of that cross member because the front body mounts use those two holes. And move them onto the front here. I'm going to have to cut these horns off. These front frame rails because they stick out way too far um, for what I need. They're, they're not going to they would, they would go out beyond the grill of the 51. So today what I've done is uh, moved everything out of the way for one. Progress is slow if you have a project, you know it. Uh, you tend to let stuff sit for a while. I've got the front clip of the 51 over there. What I'm going to do is blow out these frame rails because I thought I was going to move quicker than I did. I should have done this before, but I had cleaned out the inside of the frame rails so that I can coat it with um, Eastwood uh, internal frame coating, which I bought some here. So I'm going to blow that out and coat that frame today. Uh, probably what I'll do with this video is throw in some pictures of some of the progress when the car was purchased and bought, uh, loaded, and uh, some of the original teardown. Didn't do any video there. I, I kind of regret that now. Uh, just some pictures. So let's clean this out. So the Eastwood internal frame coating, uh, I've used it before. It works pretty good. It's a little expensive. I think it's $20 to $25 per can for uh, 14 ounces. You can find uh, uh, some other brands out there. I've checked eBay. Uh, maybe it was Summit, Jegs. A couple other companies can make have a similar product. Uh, it comes with a straw with a nozzle that has several holes drilled in it at angles um, so that it sprays inside the can frame you take the original cap out and put the new one in try not to spray yourself in the process i'm gonna start at the back and work my way to the front this stuff's fairly thin it's gonna run out of all these holes all over the floor uh you, if you want to put down some protective material these are I, in the videos you see here they're not how to's it's just how i did it or how we did it not doing these to be training videos of any sort. If you're a professional and you know what you're doing, critique it all you want. That's not my goal. This 
straw I can, you can push way up into the frame. But in these areas where I have holes, these are accessible. See what I mean by dripping? You might not see that. In the areas where I have these holes, these are accessible. I'm just going to stick it in just a little bit there. running out of this first can. Some of us, some of the videos I'll show you, will post up. Some of the guys do know what they're doing. If you're using this stuff, I suggest you use a drop cloth because it's going to soak going to soak stuff. It's going to drip all over. Alright, well I'm going to save that last can for later. may use it on the front section. may have to coat back up inside this again. Alright, so two cans, one per side. You can see all that splatter uh, came out from the inside. Some of it's from when I pulled the straw out. But that should be coated pretty good. Still got to clean up the outside of the frame again. Uh, we, I had left this frame sitting outside for a while. Cleaned it up, painted it. Left it outside. It, look, it look, started looking pretty rough. Cleaned it up, painted it again. Left it sitting outside again. And this, moved it into a shop. It's been in here about two years. I think I've had this car four, five years. And just progress has been slow until this year. Uh, like most projects, you get it, you're motivated, start moving quickly on it, and then you just stop. Uh, one thing I want to mention, six lug Dakota wheels. I had considered buying hubs and buying new hubs, sending those off to, it's either I think it was Moser. Uh, Moser or Strange, I'm pretty sure it was Moser. Would, um, drill, or weld and re-drill those to the to a five and a five on four and a half standard which was the original wheels in the car but I'm gonna leave the six slugs for now. The front track width is about four inches wider, four to five inches wider than the original cornet. I've done measurements, it should fit inside those fenders because the original cornet wheels seem to be pretty close together. I'm gonna do some you know, if it doesn't work, I'll have to, uh, to uh, at this point, I'm not going to narrow the chassis. I'll, I'll flare those fenders a little bit. So if you're building a 1950s sled or hot rod or whatever, whatever you're building, you're going to put a V8 in it, right? Yes. And I second that. Except I don't have a V8 right now. I'm going to use the uh, 3.9 V6 out of the Dakota. So, might look cool coming down the road, just don't pop the hood. Uh, why am I using that? Well, because it's right here in front of me, I've got it, and I don't feel like spending any money, any more money than I have to on it. I'd love to swap over and find a 318. Money may not be that much, but I will tell you this, I don't think the V6 is worth putting the money into to rebuild. So, I'll run it as, uh, run it while I can. That, that engine's got about 145, 150,000 miles on it. One of the other projects I have not worked on in a while, 67 Mustang. Um, it is, I, I pulled the cowl out because I thought I was ready to put the front back together and uh, found rust right here under the cowl. I knew the cowl was rusted out. I had hoped to patch the bottom side, but couldn't patch that side. Let's just replace it. So I do have a new cowl for it. I'm running TCI Mustang 2 front suspension on there. As I said, I thought I was ready to start bolting that back together, put my fender wheels in. Um, originally this this car had the front frame rail battery had exploded years ago probably in the 70s and the tire frame rail had rot, rotted out over here so I had to replace that frame rail uh, I wasn't the first because when I took it apart I realized that uh, front inner fender well and the frame rails had been put together uh, well before I had it uh, this is actually my mom's car she got it 1968 so I'm thinking it was wrecked in 67 and then she got it but that'd be another project 
Let's go over here to the 51. So there's a 51. Got plenty of Eastwood stickers all over it uh, for right now. I mean, not Eastwood, excuse me. Rock Auto. Rock Auto, you get magnets, not stickers either. You get magnets uh, with, with, I think, about every order. So, but there's the 51, the way she sits right now. Front end's off. I love the split windows in the front. Again, four door, but I got it for a great price. Couldn't pass it up. Wasn't even looking for cars. Happened to run across it. I try to run, or I plan to run the factory Dakota steering column. Uh, Going to run with um, air condition, power steering, all the good stuff. The car's not too bad. It does have a dent there. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but it's right under the G in the Dodge logo there. Um, pretty good, pretty solid car. That's why I got it. Probably some rust down around the rocker somewhere. There is a small hole right here where I sprayed. Small hole there where the metal's getting thin. Rest of it, uh, you know, the interior is yeah, roached out. It's roached out. I don't think we can see anything up there. Interior is just terrible. But, you know, it's an old car it's from the 50s. Who knows how long it's been sitting. All right, next steps on this car. I need to align those front horns. To do that, I need the body put back on. So I'm going to get one of my buddies or one of the brigade members. There's only three of us right now, so it's far from a brigade. But, you know, calling ourselves the black top three didn't, didn't have the same ring to it. So we'll get together, move the body over so that I can do two things. One, figure out where I need to cut these off and put the new horns on for the body mounts. And two, these engine mounts for the Dakota put the engine way too far forward. Uh, by my estimation, it's about eight to 10 inches forward. So these, these body mounts here, I'm gonna have to move back somewhere in here. Uh, transfer, uh, not transfer, but the cross member for the transmission. Used to bolt right there on those four holes, right above that board. And it's gonna need to be moved back. I'll probably end up getting a generic universal trans, um, cross member trans, transmission mount and bolt, um, weld the brackets back here and put the cross. may make something myself, but you know, um, I think it's Jegs makes some universal stuff. Certainly it's under a hundred bucks. So it's simple to throw something together. On my nice little wooden stand there, I made to move this frame around so I can make room in the shop when I'm not working on it. A couple other cars will, that might make it in here, but if you have projects yourself, you know it's easy to buy too many. It's very easy to go buy a new project and get motivated and push one to the side. And that's kind of where I am now. I've got uh, that Mustang and this car, and then there's always projects around the house, right? So the best advice I can give you is what somebody gave to me. I didn't necessarily listen, but pick a project, Stick to it till you get it done, move on to another one. You bite off too many projects, money gets out of control. You don't have enough money to buy all the parts you need for finishing multiple projects at one time. Stick with us. Next video you see will be, um, should be us putting the body back on this car to get some measurements for engine transmission placement, front body mount placement. Um, all right, well, let's end it. I think I've talked enough. Thanks, guys.